Hey everyone, this lesson is on empidigo. So in this lesson, we're talking about what bacteria cause empidigo, how we can make the diagnosis of empidigo, and also some other subtypes of empidigo. And we're also going to finish up with how we treat empidigo. So empidigo is a contagious, superficial, and purulent infection caused by bacteria of the Streptococcus and Staphylococcus genus. With Streptococcus, it's most likely, or most often, group A strep. Now, with empidigo, it is an infection of the stratum corneum of the epidermis, as opposed to other bacterial skin infections like uh, erysipelas and cellulitis. We'll talk about other those other conditions in later lessons. So it's an infection of the stratum corneum. And this condition presents in a particular way. It starts with vesicular lesions that progress to a honey-crusted lesion. So that's the key here. It's a honey-crusted lesion, which is surrounded by an erythematous or red base. So if we were to take a close uh, view of a, a honey-crusted lesion, like we see here, again, it's honey-crusted, so it's a yellowish, kind of crusty lesion. And if you were to look at the surrounding surfaces, it is erythematous, so it's an, on an erythematous base. Now, you can get empidigo either by a primary infection, so it, you could just get it, and that, that's the first infection you get in that area, or it can be a secondary empidigo, what we call um, a empidigo infection secondary to, say, a skin uh, cut or a wound. So you can have open skin that gets seeded in with some of this streptococcus or staphylococcus bacteria causes a secondary empidigo. Now, going to quickly talk about risk factors here too. So risk factors of empidigo often include a young age. So you're generally going to see this condition in children and young adults. And a second risk factor is crowding. So because it's a contagious condition, you're going to see this condition more in people that are in maybe a larger, um, a larger family in a smaller home, those types of crowding conditions. It's often uh, also associated with a poor hygiene. So if an individual doesn't wash well, this bacteria can colonize and cause an infection. And also is more related to warm or humid conditions. So it seems that a warm, humid condition can cause a, uh, an increase in the likelihood of an empidigo infection. So now there are three subtypes of empidigo we're going to talk about. The first one is non-bullous empidigo, and that is the, actually the most common form of empidigo. It is papules that progress to vesicles on an erythematous base. The second subtype is a bolus empidigo. So like its name suggests, it actually presents as bolle. So you're going to see these kind of weak, flaccid bolle that are filled with a, a uh, yellowish fluid that could erupt, um, and you're going to get this type of presentation. So this condition, again, has bullae, but it's particularly important to recognize that bullous empidigo is caused by a Staphylococcus aureus infection, as opposed to other empidigo infections, which are often caused by group A strep. And with this condition, it's vesicles that progress to flaccid bullae with clear yellow fluid within the bullae that darkens over time. If the bullae doesn't erupt, that fluid will become darker and darker over time. And the third subtype of empidigo we're going to talk about is ecthyma empidigo. So ecthyma empidigo is a bit different than the rest of these conditions in that it presents as an ulcerative, kind of punched out, as we call it, lesion with crusting around the lesion. So again, it looks like it presents as ulcerative and it presents as, looks like there's been holes that have been punched out in the skin. So now that we've actually made the diagnosis of a particular empidigo, how do we treat it? Treatment generally can be um, determined by the severity of the condition. If it's a limited empidigo, limited empidigo, we could conservatively remove the crusts carefully, do saline compresses in antiseptic soaks, but oftentimes we're going to use a medical 
treatment for this. We're going to use topical treatments if it's limited in pedigo. Some of these include ritapamulin uh, twice a day for five days. We could use muparosin three times a day for five days or fusidic acid. Now, some of these uh, treatments aren't, in, aren't in, uh, available in all countries, so you might not be able to get uh, these treatments in other countries. So, um, but these are some options that you can use for a limited impedigo. Now, if it's an extensive impedigo or an ecthyma impedigo, which is a more uh, kind of a more uh, serious condition, we're going to use uh, oral antibiotics, and one of them is cloxacillin. We can use cloxacillin seven to ten days. And the other one is cephalexin, which we could also use for about seven to 10 days as well. Now, if you want to learn more about dermatology conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.